Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 might be one of the most impactful first-person shooters of all time. From multiplayer that redefined progression and moment-to-moment gameplay, to a campaign that took the franchise to new heights and set expectations for what a modern cinematic game should be, with a story that gripped players emotionally, set pieces that reimagined modern-day conflict, and action that could not be rivaled. And because of that, it has some of the most iconic levels that everyone is sure to remember. So after recently replaying the campaign to see if it holds up, not only did I come to the realization that yes, it definitely does, but there is also two levels that I personally think are masterclass showcases of atmosphere and immersion. And no, neither include the controversial level, no Russian. The two levels in question are Of Their Own Accord and Second Son, both narratively taking place back to back. To quickly sum up the plot to this moment for those who somehow never played the game, in the wake of a false flag attack led by Vladimir Makarov at the Zakhaev Airport in Moscow, Russia, believing the members involved with the massacre were American, retaliates against the United States with a full-scale military invasion after political tensions reach an all-time high and basically kick off World War III. There's some finer details details obviously, but summarise this is all you need to know. Of Their Own Accord takes place at the end of the second act of the game, timeline wise a day after the initial invasion. Starting in a makeshift bunker, you play as Private James Ramirez and are tasked alongside your team to secure a nearby evacuation zone that has come under fire from armour and surface to air missile placements. Explosions knock you about, debris is shaken loose, artillery fire and muffled combat sounds can be heard coming from above, radio chatter drones from all around with repeated calls for fire and backup, and numerous soldiers are strewn about, exhausted, wounded or dying. The scene that this paints is bleak, with what feels like a less heroic portrayal of warfare than previous missions, and the low hum of the music reinforces this feeling of exhaustion, loss, and a sense of foreboding. But as you turn to leave the bunker, members of your squad greet you and you all begin to head up the crudely dug trench, and this is where the full picture starts to emerge. Sandbags, razor wire, the sky is thick with smoke and orange flashes of explosions, air support flies overhead, you turn the corner to the left, the music swells, and prominently displayed, right in front of you, clear as day is none other than the Washington Monument. You're not fighting this war in some country people can't point out on the map. You're in the heart of Washington DC, in the lawn before the Department of Commerce. Even as someone who isn't from the United States, the feeling of both patriotism and astonishment were riding at a fever high. The environmental and set piece design are phenomenal. You're immersed in this pixel reality of war and chaos, where all sense of destruction and heroism is on display for all to see. One of the aspects that helps establish not only the tone, but the entire feeling of the setting is Hans Zimmer's excellent musical composition. Uh, just as a quick note while I was editing, Hans Zimmer is credited with composing the main theme and Lorm Balf is actually responsible for the rest of the music in the game. So any references to Hans Zimmer is actually Lorm Balf, I apologise. The track Siege that plays during this initial section that rises into a full crescendo really hammers home how dire the situation is, and for me personally made the hair on my arm stand up. It's a brilliant execution and it firmly captures the player's attention. In addition to this, combat sounds visceral. Explosions ring out in every direction, gunfire echoes from all around, and if you happen to be near a tank when it fires, your hearing damage definitely wasn't service related. But it's not just that, there is also the constant radio chatter asking for reinforcements, directions coming down from the chain of command, soldiers yelling all around you, and of course Keith David's spectacular performance as Sergeant Foley. The level itself involves moving from the Department of Commerce to an enemy weapons nest on the upper floors in order to provide covering fire for the Washington Monument evacuation site. Once cleared, you are tasked with using heavy ordnance to destroy multiple vehicles and waves of enemies. All while Hans Zimmer's work begins to swell once again, building the tension back up to a heart-pounding degree. The radio waves are endlessly busy with orders, intelligence, and screams. After buying the evac site some time, again it's a mad rush to the rooftop to board a helicopter and provide air support. The electric guitars come in and we enter full on cinematic mode with some of the most over the top action that could be experienced at this moment in time. is hit, we smash into the ground, and we're faced with a last stand situation. Two magazines of ammunition against the might of the Russian forces. A gunship light rushes to meet us, and the screen fades to white. 
Of Their Own Accord is definitely a level that is cranked up enough that even Michael Bay is telling them to turn it down, but I believe it works exceptionally well because of how well the music and sound design works together. The score builds the bass work for the dramatic intense atmosphere which is only further emphasised by the chaos of the radio traffic and the exceptional voice acting from everyone involved. Foley, Overlord, the EVAC site, every soldier around, they all provide so much authenticity to the pandemonium all around and really immerse you in the scenario. From a narrative perspective, we the player are being told about how bad the situation is, how friendly forces are being completely overrun and that this entire ordeal has basically been turned into complete foobar, and the gameplay actually delivers and shows us what a shitstorm this really is. I cannot emphasise more about how excellent the voice acting, especially from Overlord, reflects how dire these moments are. When Overlord sounds panicked, you can't help but feel it yourself. Hunter 2-1, recommend you clear out of there, I see a map of foot mobiles converging on your position. Gameplay wise it's a rush with very little breathing room, one set piece to the next while friends and foes clash and scream. And this level embodies the word chaos and has you thinking we might actually lose. And then we transition into Second Sun. Second Sun canonically takes place right after Of Their Own Accord, however there is a mission that takes place in between called Contingency that puts you into the boots of Sergeant Gary Roach of the 141 Task Force. The TLDR is that a nuclear missile gets launched and is detonated in the stratosphere above Washington DC, causing an electromagnetic pulse that fries all the electrical components in the eastern region of the United States. Q, Second Sun. The EMP blast hits and all hell breaks loose. All manners of aircraft literally fall out of the sky, impacting the buildings and ground nearby strewing rubble and debris across the street. Explosions rock your screen, and then it all goes quiet. Until this moment, rarely has there been a moment in Call of Duty history, and very few and far between for first person shooters in general, where you are left in complete utter silence after such an impactful event. These levels back to back, the explosive chaoticness of Of Their Own Accord, and eerie desolation of Second Sun are stark contrast to one another. They couldn't be more different. Second Sun is devoid of combat for the first 5 to maybe 10 minutes depending on your playtime, which works perfectly as both a gameplay and emotional break from the Hollywood-esque action we have been familiar with until now. It's a chance to rest to take in the events of what has just taken place, and it also makes you appreciate the human element of your teammates more. You going out there? Are you nuts? What the hell happened here? It's quiet. Here's your red dot working mine's out. Mine's down too. The dialogue comes across as real, even these courageous soldier archetypes feel stunned as to the hell they just went through, sharing concerns and nervous thoughts out loud, yet still being professional and not letting their guard down mostly. With only two brief combat encounters, Second Sun comes in as one of the shortest missions, but due to the lack of combat, the sound of heavy rain and crushing loneliness, it becomes a stellar example of using downtime to let the player breathe, and a level that truly stands out in my opinion. While Modern Warfare 2 has some over the top action set pieces during the runtime of the game, these two levels in my opinion showcase excellent narrative focus and gripping atmosphere that has you on the edge of your seat from the moment your boots hit the ground. From being thrust into the explosive chaos of a battle in the heart of Washington DC, to slowly creeping through the same streets not knowing who survived the turmoil caused by the EMP, these levels are diametrically opposed to one another and work that much better because of this reason. Much of the impact of these levels is due to the sound design alone, the voice acting performances and dialogue are absolutely stellar, and the music fits beautifully. It's almost bittersweet given the context of the missions. If you haven't played the original Modern Warfare 2 campaign, I highly recommend to take an afternoon to do so, but most definitely take the time to experience these two excellent missions firsthand. You won't regret it. Thanks for watching.